So many of us suffer from health issues and we have no idea why. They're often created from the air around us, especially in our homes. The Yoohoo Air Quality Smart Sensor comes packed with nine different air quality sensors to be able to help diagnose any air quality issues you may have either at your home, at the office, or even while traveling. Today we're gonna unbox, set up, and test out the sensor and see not only how well it works, but also find out the quality of the air in my house. And I'm kind of nervous. So let's get started. What's up guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech. And on this channel, we do smart home tech reviews, installations, and DIY guides. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any time, check out the video description down below for show notes, and product links for everything mentioned in this video. So full disclosure, Yoohoo sent this to me to review, but as always, this is a non-biased review with my own opinions. Before they reached out, I never really thought about all the potentially harmful things that could be in the air. This sensor has the potential to find some unhealthy conditions in the air around us that we really have no idea about otherwise. So like I mentioned, there are nine different air quality sensors inside this guy temperature and humidity, that's pretty standard, air pressure, carbon dioxide, VOC, which is typically found in paint and many popular cleaning chemicals, PM 2.5, which is basically dust, it's particular matter, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, and ozone. That's also packed with an ARM-based processor and advertises to have a 256-bit encryption with their app so you are secure. Now let's just go ahead and pop this bad boy open and see what the unboxing experience is like. So we have a little welcome note here. To get started, download the app. Okay, now here is the smart sensor itself. It's kind of loose in the box a little bit. Kind of is a little bit concerning. Hopefully it's not damaged because we all know how the... Uh, Delivery drivers handle packages. So it's pretty sleek, pretty modern looking. Right off the bat, we can see it's got a micro USB power plug on the back. Nowadays, I would really like to see USB-C on a lot of these types of devices, especially at this price point, which I haven't mentioned yet, is right around $300. All right, so let's see what else we've got. We've got a adapter here and a power cord. All right, so next I'm going to jump into the app. There's pretty much no directions in the box itself other than download the Yoohoo app. So I've got that downloading and installing. I'm gonna open up the micro USB cable here and get it plugged in and powered up. Got some colors coming out of the bottom of it. Got a little LED in there. Let's go ahead and create an account, sign up. All right, so my account has been created and this is what we are left with here. So set up my first Yoohoo. Click the little plus button there and uh, wait five or six, 10 seconds for light to turn blue. Yes, it is blue. It's always a good idea when you have these kind of smart home devices to have your five and 2.4 gigahertz networks separated, at least the name separated, so that it is easier to connect uh, devices like this. So yes, connect to this Wi-Fi, which I have separated out and called it Taylor Castle 2.4. Just like a typical Wi-Fi device, Go to settings and connect to the Wi-Fi network that this is broadcasting. Which I don't see it. There it is. Yoohoo. And then probably the MAC address. Now we've got the device name with the MAC address. And we need to enter the password for our Wi-Fi here. Select your region. Alright, congratulations. Blah, blah, blah. The light on your Yoohoo device will turn off and it will check for software updates and it will start measuring your air after two minutes. Okay. All right, so as you can see, we've got all of the different sensors listed here in list form or you can put it in grid form like this. Um, there's nothing listed yet, of course, because it hasn't been running for very long. It says it needs a couple of days in order to kind of get everything calibrated, I would assume, which makes sense. Um, doesn't want to give any false alarms right off the bat, but I'm gonna let this run for a couple of weeks. Overall, just see the air quality of my home. I'm kind of nervous, like I said, but I'm also excited. So anyway, I will see you guys in a couple weeks.
All right, guys, we are back. It's been about a couple of weeks since I first unboxed the Yoohoo air quality sensor, and it gave me some time to check it out, use the app, and get some alerts and see how well these sensors actually work, how the notifications work, and how clean my house actually is. Now, before we dive too far into anything, I do wanna say right off the bat that I am really impressed with this device. It seems that all of the sensors are calibrated very well and the overall app experience is top notch. Speaking of the app, it is done very well. It is complex enough to give you all the details and suggestion for each type of sensor, but simple and intuitive enough to immediately know how to navigate it. So looking at the app in a little bit more in depth here, you can see that we have a layout of all nine of the sensors here. Green meaning that it's in the acceptable range. As you can see here, the CO2 is a little bit elevated right here, probably because my breath is uh, kind of setting it off after talking for a couple minutes. It is that sensitive. I will go into more details on that later. Now, if you do want to adjust where the sliders fall in each different category, say maybe your house is a little bit more dusty than the average, you can adjust that slider up just simply go to edit and sensors and maybe you like it a little bit colder in your house so 60 so right now 64 would actually set off an insight and give you a notification so maybe we want the low to be 60 and the high to be maybe 75 so now we won't get an alert unless it drops below 60 or above 75 and same thing with all of the other sensors you can change that I pretty much have everything default for the most part. So probably one of my favorite parts of the app is something called Insights. If you click this little light bulb here, this is pretty much everything that is sent to your phone as a notification. But you can also see everything listed here under Insights. Now most of these are showing uh, CO2 levels a bit high and that is something that's been going on in my house quite often. As you can see here, lots of different notifications about CO2 levels rising above 800 parts per million. I'm not sure why that is. I think mainly because it is in a heavily trafficked area and simply the breath from your mouth can actually raise the CO2 level in the room. As a matter of fact, if I go back to a certain date, I believe it was March 1st, I can actually click on this, click on the graph, and I can set which date I want. If I go back to March 1st, I remember this was the day that I first realized that when my wife and I was exercising in the living room right next to the sensor, I got a notification that said to open the windows immediately because the CO2 level was so high. So we slide over to carbon dioxide and I go to the, the full day. You can see that at about 8 p.m., which is typically when we exercise, the CO2 level jumped all the way up to 1600 parts per million and that is in the red zone which tells you to open a window to, you know, kind of ventilate the house a little bit. And it is winter time, so our windows typically are not open and doors are always shut. So I didn't even realize that simply exercising, you know, breathing heavily for an extended period of time could actually raise the CO2 levels in the house that much. So let me show you another example of a time in the day where a lot of the sensors were elevated and that was on March 6th, around uh, 7 or 8 p.m. I was actually cooking dinner and I was cooking steak and I was cooking it on a skillet so it made a lot of smoke with the butter that I added and the oil and it got a little bit out of hand, caused quite a bit of smoke in the house. And check out the, um, the carbon dioxide level that jumped up during that time, but the thing that really caught my interest was the PM 2.5, which is the particular the particulates in the air. Now, take a look at that jump there. It's pretty much normally zero or really close to zero. Uh, it jumped all the way up to max, pretty much. And if I switch it from day to week, you can see where pretty much the whole week we are right around zero. And then that day on March 6th, as you can see the date down at the bottom there, we had a huge jump. So not only was it the PM 2.5, the particulates in the air, the VOCs, as you can see, also shot way up there. Carbon dioxide, as well as the temperature, because, you know, with smoke comes a little bit of heat. Things you don't really think about when it comes to cooking or everyday life, how it really does affect the air quality in the house. Now, going back to the insights, there was an alert I got on the 25th of February, so almost two weeks ago, just a day or two after I unboxed it, 
you could see that I got an alert for high VOCs. I had no idea what was even going on. And it turns out this was sitting next to a power strip upstairs in a separate bedroom, kind of a spare bedroom. And I'm assuming maybe the power strip was putting off some kind of, it was an old one, maybe it was some kind of plasticky chemical. I don't really know what happened there, but that's just my guess. Something I would have never otherwise known uh, that was going on if I didn't have this to tell me. Another quick example of the insights, uh, low humidity. It says to turn on your humidifier, dry environment is not good for your skin. And another really helpful tool in the app is this little information icon where you can scroll through all of the different sensors. It gives you a detailed definition of the sensors and what kind of effects they can have on you and your family and how to mitigate them and make them better. So I'm not gonna read through all of these obviously, but if we go to, uh, let's say PM 2.5, where I wasn't really 100% sure what that means, so I read through this. It's basically saying it's fine dust particles or droplets in the air that are 2.5 microns or less in width. And it's saying that these are everywhere, especially on carpets, stuffed toys, upholstered furniture, and even in smoke, as I saw from that experience when cooking dinner that day. Now, another thing to note with some of these sensors is that it does max out. So when I was cooking, as you can see here, the PM 2.5 reading was 200 UGM3, whatever kind of measurement that is. It's not parts per million. However, PM 2.5 is measured. It was actually maxed out at 200 when it was really smoky in the house. Now, since it was maxed out on the slider here, I was curious what the actual reading was, if it was much worse than that or right at 200, for example. So I grabbed my Xiaomi air purifier, which also has a PM 2.5 sensor in it. And I brought it upstairs and plugged it in. And sure enough, it was reading 600 UGM3 and even though this app was maxed out at 200, it was actually three times worse in the house. So keep that in mind. If this shows that it is maxed out, it could actually be much worse than it actually is. All right, so let's talk about smart home integration. This does work with Ift and Ifta. So in Ift, search for Yoohoo, and under services, there it is right there. And you can go ahead and uh, connect. I'm already connected, obviously, but you just have to sign into your Yoohoo account that you create when you first sign up with this. And it gives you some examples here. You can have it turn on your air purifier based on the PM 2.5 level in the house. Uh, record everything to a Google spreadsheet. You know, the device goes on and on, but in a lot of cases, you may use this maybe to control another smart device or a smart outlet to maybe turn on a fan, a window fan, to ventilate if the carbon dioxide levels increase, or turn on a humidifier if the humidity levels decrease, or a dehumidifier when the humidity levels increase. So with an IFT applet here, we can have any one of our sensors alert us, or whatever we want to do when the sensor rises, above, rises or drops below a set threshold. And that threshold can be anything we want it to be. Now, like I said, the other integration is with you know who. And when using the echo integration, it's as simple as ask you who the status of whatever sensor you want. So, so ask you who what the humidity is. Humidity is 33.3%. Ask you who what is the carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is 998.0 parts per million. All right, so you can ask her any one of the sensors just so you can have a quick idea of what's going on. So I even brought this with me one day to work to see how bad the air quality is at the steel mill. Now everyone at work is always complaining about getting sick or how terrible the air we breathe is throughout the day. While I'm in an office not exposed to the mill directly, the results actually shocked me. The quality of the air was actually the same, if not better, than it is here at home. Now, that may be because there is some pretty excessive uh, ventilation going on in the offices there, but regardless, I thought that I had been breathing this terrible air for the past five years that I've been there, and truth is, it's actually not that bad. Now, a pro tip, if you do decide to take this with you in the car to work, a hotel, or whatever, Set up your phone's mobile hotspot with the same SSID and password as your home network 
so that it will connect right away without having to hard reset the device. So overall, I actually really love this thing. I wish it integrated into more home automation platforms like SmartThings, but that could be done through Ift just fine. The notifications and insights are really helpful and the detailed description of each sensor help with any sensor you may not be familiar with. The price is quite steep, but when you consider everything that's included, including the app and the integration, it takes a bit of the pain away, although I'd like to see it under the $300 price. And considering that steep price, it does feel a bit cheap, a bit plasticky in the hand, but that said, most of its life will be lived somewhere on a shelf, and I have to say it does look quite nice. As far as functionality is concerned, I've had no issues at all, never lost connection to the Wi-Fi, or had any false readings to my knowledge. Temperature and humidity readings are right in line with my Nest thermostat, so I can only imagine that the rest of the sensors are calibrated to that same level. This device will absolutely be staying plugged in and in use for as long as possible. It gives us another layer of peace of mind when it comes to safety for the family. So this guy probably is not for everyone given the high price range. It's not going to be for the budget DIY smart home guys out there. But if you can afford it, I would definitely recommend it for that extra layer of peace of mind and safety for the family. And who knows, you may be surprised by the quality of your air as I was with the carbon dioxide and VOC levels being raised at some points throughout the day. And if you suffer from some kind of respiratory issue, maybe if it's coming at certain times of the day, you can actually see what the air quality in your house is doing to maybe cause some of those issues that you can mitigate. Who knows, there are a lot of great benefits for having one of these in your house. Just a matter of if you can afford it or not. So that's about all I have for this one. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but I have an official Taylor Tech pop socket out now. So help support me and your phone by picking one of these up. I really appreciate it. If you did like this video, leave a like down below and consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next video.